Alright guys, have to grab a key in today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And a few days ago, Optic Hex did mention that the Optic team does intend to stay together, but whether it's possible that that will be blown out the window by Illy's injury recurring is a massive question they will have to answer. If Illy is not fully healed up going into next season, they will have to consider potential flex options. And with Kami being a restricted free agent and Optic's prior interest in getting Kami during the Cold War season, could this be a team we actually see going into 2023? Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you are new as always i'd greatly appreciate it really upset the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that another crack in slider episode here by cdl pal to start out the video many things to mention actually today first of all wanted to say this from aqua former event winner in call of duty honestly pretty underrated player i think for the majority of his career he's joining up um, the well westcliff university esports ccl team this is something that you can't really blame the players for but just kind of shows what the state of the challenges ecosystem is when you've got a you know former call of duty event winners and challenges champions going to um you know going to college getting a scholarship right which makes sense but feel kind of bad for the other college cop guys who have to rock up and play you know world champion silly and aqua as well in these games when they're just trying to make it themselves so anyway i thought i'd mention that one this also to mention with regard to the upcoming title crim6 as he's been going rogue obviously has um had a few words to say on the upcoming game and um even rated mentions that he's got three weeks after the game launches to win every kickoff and get a cdl contract before warzone comes out a couple of weeks later and um and then of course potentially he'll go back to do that so yeah Raiders is implying here that um, he's actually looking to maybe make the return so that'd be pretty interesting I thought was actually a really good player maybe a slightly underrated player during his tenure in Call of Duty at least on the competitive side has killed it in Warzone but um yeah maybe he's considering that option as well three weeks of multiplayer grinds before Warzone 2 comes out now speaking of Modern Warfare 2 Krim gave his thoughts on it and look Krim loved Modern Warfare 2019 he actually really enjoyed that game so I would take his words here with a bit of a grain of salt if you didn't like Modern Warfare 2019 because we imagine the games are going to be rather similar. He said in this clip I'm about to share that the game actually felt pretty good. He actually thought it was okay. He did quite enjoy it, but he did feel like the build he was playing on felt like, okay, is it made for Android or is it made for iPhone, right? Do you reckon it was a pretty sketchy early build of the game, which may indicate the game isn't particularly polished, but he reckons that fundamentally it's actually quite fun. Let's put it this way. It feels, it's class, it's sort of like classic movement. You're still sliding. Shots, he's still going to find a way to abuse, break something probably within 72 hours. Um, but let's just say that, you know, playing it, my, this is what, this is the joke. I'll just, I'll just say it, all right? When, when I was playing it, you know, my $5,000 computer, I was legitimately wondering, okay, is this the build they made for Android? Or is this the iPhone version? Because I don't understand. We're going forward in time. No, but don't get me wrong. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was sort of fun. So that is certainly a bit of an interesting one. Wanted to mention these as well before we discuss Optic here, the Asia Pacific All Challenger team. So, eventually, the players that are the, well, the standout players from these regions. Under, I mean, look, Shox is here again as he's going to be every year. I imagine he's going to be competing. This is the one from North America, actually, which, of course, most people are interested in. Scrappy, Vickle, Exceed, and Assault are the four guys that made the All Challenger team. Brack, Mohawk, Fame, and Hixie, Panda, Goderex, Classic, and Pentagram are kind of at the other top prospects from this region, right? So, you know, guys like Vickle, guys like Exceed, there has been some talk of course like we expect Scrappy the NA MVP who pretty much everyone voted for was uh, going to be joining the Toronto main team the Toronto Ultra Vickle and Exceed are interesting prospects as well because people have talked about them potentially going to teams like Florida or teams like Minnesota that might need some SMG guys because some teams have their SMGs some teams most certainly do not Minnesota and Florida being two of those teams that's an interesting one Assault as well world champion back in 2018 and MVP from that event on Evil Geniuses might get an opportunity back as well I still think he's a good player player and kind of the more ARs that are on the cusp of getting into the league and kind of on the cusp of being in the league or out of the league, Assault could replace one of those guys depending and then you know Mohawk, Fame and Hixie and Brack even a good option as well that some teams might want to build around so definitely an interesting one this is the European side as well, players to keep your eyes on as well here in this free agency period because all these guys can go pretty much where they want now Beans is I believe a restricted free agent on the, um, or at least he's a free agent for the, well the ultra guys because he's on their bench kind of thing but they might well sell him elsewhere so Beans, Wardy, Super, Denzer 
there. These are kind of the key guys. I believe Dinder actually said he's going to retire, so like um, I don't know if we're going to see more from him, but Vortex Journey, Lucky Wee Man, Real, of course, who was killing it early on in that Minnesota Rocker Academy. Well, I think it was before they got picked up by the Rocker Academy. As soon as they got picked up, things went a bit downhill for them. Furious, Harry Maple as well, other names of note. So um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys we've just looked at end up in the league next season on teams like Florida, Minnesota. They need especially some SMG talent. They might have to look down here. Let's talk about the Optic Texas possibilities then for next season. So a couple of days ago, we mentioned this, the General and Pro Loop were stepping away from the team. It was a bit of a surprise to me. They were releasing both of them, like, you know, fully releasing them because I thought Pro Loop was an interesting option as their substitute. And obviously like, they were thinking, well, maybe if he gets picked up elsewhere and if he doesn't, maybe we keep him around. The fact that they've completely wiped their bench clean is um is interesting in terms of who might actually be on their bench next season. You'd think they'd have some idea as to which player they want to bring into their bench if they're getting rid of Pro Loop, right? General, of course, good player, but is never going to be the best substitute because he's only really a main AR. So he's not going to be great for replacing a you know, scump shot to your really because that's why they had to get Pro Loot in. But releasing both of these guys was pretty interesting. Now, the key question here really is around Ely, right? I'm sure the team, it does seem, wants to stick together. Whether they will be able to is the question around Ely because people have said, is his thumb actually fully healthy now? I think it was a kind of an unwritten assumption of the last couple of months of the league since Ely returns that he's playing pretty well, right? He was doing well at champs. Like, he looked like he was playing pretty well. Now, is his thumb healed? I don't know, especially because we saw even before he did return, there was some talk from people that, okay, well, you know, he might have to have further surgery after the season just to completely rectify it. And maybe that's fine, right? Maybe he has surgery or whatever he needs in a couple of weeks' time, and then it heals up by the time the new season begins. But if you're optic, you really can't risk anything because the entire point of sticking together with this team of four is like, look, last season was derailed by Ellie's injury. If that doesn't happen again next year, then it will be good to go and we're going to win everything and win champs or whatever. If they can't guarantee that Lily's injury won't recur, then, you know, what's the point running it back in the first place? Because, I mean, look, can you imagine Scump, if they do run it back and then two months into the season, Illy's injury recurs again and then Scump's thinking, well, you know, just retire right now on the spot because the season's chalked again. So they can't afford that to happen. This is what Rambo said on it a few days ago, saying that it's probably not fully healed. He will likely spend the off-season visiting doctors and getting it 100% again for the Modern Warfare 2 season. So that's not exactly a great sign. So I wanted to show all the guys on the flank had to say on this actually and Aches made an interesting point about look maybe it's time to put Illy to the bench and decide to get a guy like Kami in. Kami is there as a restricted free agent. He's an available flex player with an incredibly high ceiling. If they brought him into the team for Illy what would that do to this team? Would it improve the ceiling? Would it kind of lower the floor? That's a question that you guys can answer in the comment section below. I thought they were just going to stay together. I didn't think they were going to change. Well, well they're, they're clearly I think not going to make a change. I, I There's think no the way. Optic, the I'm sure Hex said they're not changing on a yeah. podcast. Oh, he I said that? The, I didn't even know that. The question for Optic is, so it, they released General, they released Prolo. I think the Ender situation, obviously, you know, we hope he's fully healthy and this injury doesn't reoccur. But, you know, if you're part of the front office staff of Optic, I think you do have a responsibility to probably find a sub that needs to come in in the pinch. And so very curious to see what they do on that front and who they go, who to go down with and who they get because, you know, you don't want to repeat it this season. Yeah. Karma was looking to be a sub, like oh, actually, uh, no, fairly I, seriously. Yeah. You think that you think you think Karma's gonna be a sub for their? <laughs> he should. Karma would be nasty as a sub. But, but that bro, requires, bro. That requires Karma literally game, won't man. play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but but bro, he comes in with fresh hands. Forget about it. He might be nasty. You know. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe he actually will. But yeah, I, I, don't, I, I think I, I think don't, he'd be good. I don't Listen, know bro. if he actually would. Listen, bro. They need to they need to pick up Cammy and, and and say goodbye and her. Wait, pay, oh, Chris, what, what podcast did you hear Hector says? I think I might have watched it, but I don't remember. So Toronto extended Cami knowing he will get offers, right? I think teams like, you know, obviously Minnesota should be considering a guy like Cami because they've got a completely, well, a clean slate. But teams like Boston, obviously New York Subliners, possibly they might need a flex player over there. Los Angeles Grillers. They all could be interesting candidates for Cami to go to because the top teams are going to stay together pretty much from last season. Optic, though, is a bit of a wild card because if one player is the most likely to have to step out of that team, it's going to be Illy, right? Scump and Shotzi are going to stay there. Dashi, you'd imagine, is going to stay there as well. So if there's anyone that's going to be swapped out, it's probably going to be Illy. Now, Kami is a, a player in that role and could join the team. He's a restricted free agent. Optic could try and get him, especially because they were interested in getting him before. There was this talking point not that long ago now during the Cold War season. I believe it came out shortly after the Cold War season was over that, um, that Optic were looking at Kami to try and pick him up to their team off Toronto because they wanted to replace Formal. They kind of knew, okay, Formal isn't, you know, he's not really so into it anymore. He's 
probably going to retire at the end of the season, like um, even this tweet from Dashi back in the day. Like um, the possibility of a Dashi Cami, like an Envoy and Skump team last year for the latter half of the season was not off the table and they kind of wanted it to happen. Because we know that last year on the Optic team, you know, Dashi and Fumma were clashing a bit in terms of roles and it made sense to make Dashi the full-time AR and Kami the flex player in that situation. Now look, if they were to make this change and bring Kami into this Optic team and put Illy to the bench, it's such an interesting potential dynamic on the team, right? I think you lose a lot by losing Illy. There was so much credit that Illy was given this season for creating the system that allowed them to bring in pro loot and, um, and have effectively no issues transitioning him immediately into that team. So look, Illy brings a lot, great search and destroy player, great existing chemistry with, of course, Dashi and, and Illy as well from back in the day, previous even to this season. And also, you know, great leader, right? Great mind for the game and does generally turn up at the big moments on land. And of course, you know, major one grand finals did an incredible job. Now, Kami to me has a higher ceiling than Illy when he's playing at his best Kami as he was in Modern Warfare for a time and certainly Cold War. Like, um, yeah, Kami can have straight up more impact than Illy can, I believe, especially in that flex role where it's incredibly important to slay out, especially given most teams have a player in that position that does exactly that. So Kami is great for that reason. Now, look, does he have the same leadership vocal abilities that that team would probably need in that role? I mean, look, they lost Illy and they said, well, look, we lost our leader. Things are just tragic here now. Like, does Kami have the ability to do that in game with Skump, Shotzi and Dashi that aren't really going to do that role? Like, that would be huge pressure on him to deliver that. And um, it's something they didn't really have when Prolute was in the team. And they kind of regained when Illy was there initially, even though it didn't quite work out at the end of the season regardless. So that's the interesting thing to me about this potential Kami move. But that's the thing, like, if Illy was on the bench, like, what does he do? Does he play a role in, like, the coaching team? Or, like, does he kind of play that role? And then if he's ready to come back, like, do they drop Illy after the next season? It's a, it's a really messy situation that Optic have to consider right now. And that's probably why Rambo said on stream recently, like, um, look, they've, they've got a lot of things to think about over the next couple of weeks. Now, the other option here potentially is attach, right? And this is a player I would mention because there's few flex players out there right now that are not only talented and potentially good enough for a team like Optic, but also have some leadership elements, right? That's the thing about Kami is it's like, okay, does he quite fit with the culture as they would like him to? Is he quite the perfect fit? Attach could be that guy because he wants to play flex, I believe. And um, yeah, he can run an SMG, can run an AR. He's also an unrestricted free agent. And look, if Optic offered him the job, like he would take the job you'd imagine because the current rumor is he's probably going to go to LAG alongside Slasher, but that might not happen, right? If Optic decides, okay, yeah, attach, you want to be our flex guy, do you want to be our flex guy? And um, he can also probably add more element of leadership than maybe Kami can, but maybe that's not the case at all. And Kami's got something in his locker. Now, like the more likely possibility is still that Lily does indeed stay, but uh, you know, we've got to talk about these possibilities. And even Aix was just straight up saying, well, like, look, we don't know about the Illy stuff. It's a bit of a risk for Optic. So, you know, why not just eliminate that risk and bring in another flex player with maybe a higher ceiling and then figure it out from there. But of course, it creates a really interesting and difficult situation for Illy if he's stuck on the bench or like whatever the situation is, does he have to leave and go elsewhere when he's healthy again? Like, um, it's an absolute mess. So I don't really know what's going to happen with Optic. Definitely intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section about what you would do if you were part of the Optic team right now or if you were calling the shots over here. Of course, like they have indicated their intention to stay together. But um, yeah, this question is still being raised and it's really difficult. It would be great if they were just to know 100% they could come back. But with free agents like Attach and like uh, Kami on the market and Optic with the pulling power they have, they've got to consider the options. This also, just to mention between these two guys, I guess Donny Tent was not a player that I mentioned. He might well end up staying on the Vegas Legion going into next season. He is a flex option. I don't really think Optic will go for him over a guy like Attach or potentially Kami is out there as an option, but thought it was an interesting question regardless because there are some good flex players out there that um, yeah, have potential in-game leadership jobs. And Optic will have to make their mind up relatively soon because free, uh, free agents can re-sign, of course, in a few days and Kami's going to have offers flying in left, right and center as for sure will attach. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. If I had to choose a three-year period here of COD games that I could only ever play for the rest of the time, I honestly might go completely rogue and say 2014, 2015, 2016. Or I might actually say 2013, 2014, 2015 just because, like, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Ghost S&D was just so much fun, but definitely Black Ops 3 has got to be in there. It's a shame I can't get Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 in the three-year run. But hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.